If you ever applied for a game development job, chances are you got rejected, but even higher chances are that you never heard back from the game studio. And this happens to probably 99% of game developers. And now I get this question a lot. People ask me, what should I do? I apply every single time, I get rejected, I don't hear back, I don't know how to get basically, how to get a job in a game studio. And having a good portfolio will not get you a job like per se, no game studio is gonna just look at your portfolio and say, oh, this is a good guy, let's hire him right away, no. But the portfolio is your gateway to the job in a game studio. If you don't have a good portfolio, you don't have, you basically don't go through the door to get to the steps like the interview and all of that stuff to get a job. So why do most game developers don't hear back from game studios when they apply for a job and the rest basically get rejected and maybe only a small fraction of them hear back from the game studio? Well, the issue is following. I've been doing this since 2015 and I've helped, I don't know, countless people get jobs in game studios. And what I found was, and by the way, I also get a lot of people sending me their portfolios to review them and all of that stuff. What I found is this pattern or whatever you're going to call it is every single game developer uses a, I don't know, a basic PDF file as their portfolio and they set that to game studios. Uh, you see, first things first, nobody's going to open your PDF file. They need to download that. They need to open it. They need to examine it. No game studio is going to do that. Why? Well, because you need to be aware of one thing. A lot of people want to do this. A lot of, a lot of people want to become game developers. Who doesn't want to work on a game that millions of people play, you know, all over the world that, you know, you see your name in the credits and all of that stuff. And that's why you need to be aware that in your job, on your job, on the same job, probably thousands of people apply. And imagine if the people at Game Studio, people who are required or who are hired to basically sort out the candidates and all of that stuff, if they had to download every single PDF file, open it, read it, and so on and so forth, that, that's not how it works. So having a PDF file as your portfolio is a big no-no. Now, are there some exceptions where somebody had a PDF file and he got hired? Probably, I don't know of any, but probably there is one in 10,000 for sure. But most of the time you will get rejected. Why? Well, because first, as I said, they need to download the PDF file. They need to open it and only then they can watch it or read it. Second thing is basically on the portfolio on that PDF, they write, you know, something like this, you know, the, the paragraph is like this high about themselves. So I do this, blah, 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 blah. I have this, blah, blah, blah. And most of the things they write are not professional, not sorted in the correct way and all of that stuff. Second thing is they list only the projects they worked on. When I say worked on, I mean their own projects because people who got a job, they know how to do it. They don't have a portfolio like that. So they put their projects right there. Now, some of them will put links to their projects and all of that stuff. But in essence, those projects don't get even, you know, seen because as I said, most game studios will not open your PDF portfolio to watch it. So ditch the PDF portfolio. And, and of course, I'm not blaming anyone for doing this because nobody is talking about this. No game dev channel. No, nobody's showing what you need to do, how to structure that, what, how your portfolio should look like and all of that stuff. So that's okay. I mean, people see somebody do something, they just follow that without, you know, even questioning it or even, you know, just researching a little bit. So my advice is make the process of your portfolio. When I say the process, I mean opening it, reviewing it, and seeing everything your portfolio has to offer as easy as possible. So for that, you will have, you know, a website. And automatically, when you switch from a PDF file to a website, you can see how much easier it is. Because when you send an email as an application or whatever, they just need to click on the link and the website opens. It's simple, you know, just one click versus downloading the file, opening the file, examining the file, you can see right away. So that's the biggest mistake why most people don't get a job in Game Studio. Basically, they get rejected or in 99% of times they don't hear back from a Game Studio. So just review your portfolio, make it as easy as possible for the Game Studio to examine it, open it, review it. Because if they don't review it, they don't see your skills, they don't see what you have, and they will not hire you. 
Second thing, that's the first part. Second thing is make sure that you portray or showcase your skills in the clearest way possible. So when somebody is looking at your portfolio, they can automatically see your skill level. They can automatically see what you can do. They can automatically see for which role you would be appropriate if you're not applying for a specific role. I don't know, like, you know, just creating AI or whatever, if it's a general role or whatever, or they will decide later on what to do with you. Make sure that you showcase your skills in the easiest way possible so that the people examining that at the game studio will know to navigate and see if you are fit for the job or not. So that's everything that's, or basically that's what I'm going to leave you with. If you just follow these two steps, you are going to get, uh, you're going to get responses back from the game studio. So like 100%, like, I mean, okay, let's not say 100% because, you know, I'm not a psychic. I cannot pred predict the future and this depends on how you structure it. But most times you will get response from game studios as opposed to having a PDF portfolio. And I've talked about this. If you, you know, if you're inside Game Dev Pro, the, the course, uh, I have a video about this in more depth, like what should you put in the portfolio, how to structure it, how everything looks like. So for you guys, you can just watch that video in the bonus section. You can see that video in more depth. And for you guys, I will probably create something down the road for that. But you know, my priority are people who are in the Game Dev Pro, so I help them first. But yeah, anyways, that would be it. And I hope this gets you, you know, through the doors of the game studio more often than not. See you in the next one.